Hello. Hello. All right. This video is about the video that I just finished for Melissa Inya. It's uh, actually a song written by Lauren Hill, performed by Melissa Inya and her band. And uh, I'd like to talk about how I actually did that video and how I got in contact with the band, because I think their backstory is pretty interesting, actually. First of all, how did I meet this band? I was staying with a friend of mine called Jifa. When I was staying there, she got the call from Melissa if she wanted to be in the band as a backup vocal performer. Shortly after, they had a gig very close to where I live now. It's just like a few hundred meters this way. So I just asked her if, if it was okay I came around with a camera just to take a few pictures of uh, that performance. She had already talked to Melissa about me and my photography, uh, so I got invited uh, in. Uh, backstage immediately and I also came for the rehearsals which is always a good idea if you want to photograph a band to sort of get to know them. There's a few example pictures right now from that exact thing so that was great because it just makes people relax way more and you just communicate way easier. I brought this gem, in my mind the best still camera ever made. It's just so intuitive and easy to use and it just makes so much sense this camera as a still uh, a camera you don't have to plan you just adjust on the go and i really love that i brought the 56 millimeter this 35 and an 18 that's the three lenses that i really enjoy the most for that camera i was invited to go with the band to a gig about three hours away three, four hours away. And then I brought the X-H2S camera because I just received it to check it out. That's a very different camera. It's actually the one that's filming this right now. Um, so I can't like sit here and show it off. But the thing with that camera is that the layout is quite different to a camera like this. This is the Fujifilm X-Pro3, a camera I made a film about in 2019 called Camera Punk. There's a link in the description. Go watch it if you have the time. It's pretty nerdy, but also pretty cool, I think. I made that film with Mindy Tan, um, absolute amazing person from Singapore. Great photographer and amazing storyteller. Yeah, I went with that one the first time, but the second time with the X-H2, it was a bit different to take pictures with the X-H2 because it's, in my mind, very much a planning camera. It has this PASM wheel where you sort of have to pre-choose what you want to do, where a camera like this is, it, it floats in between states of aperture priority and shutter speed priority and fully manual. It's just you turn these knobs and it sort of transitions into those settings where a PASM driven camera like the Nikons, uh, the SLR Nikons, the Canons and now the X-H2S with the PASM wheel, you have to predetermine how you want to work. Some people work very structured and I think for those people that camera will make total sense because you have to be more or less structured. I'm not structured at all in the sense that I just like float around and get some ideas and change things up. I have to adjust to use X-H2 but how I got around it was by making the settings I usually do in its predetermined settings. It has like seven slots on the on the on the wheel where you can pre-program everything. You can pre-program harsh black and white thing and you can pre-program a, a vintage color thing and I have like three settings in there. One is the colors I usually do that are a little bit vintage and then I have a harsh black and white. You can see some examples here and I have a third one I use for for um, flash photography. I always forget to go down and, and change all these things that I have to change when I do flash photography, but I have a setting now I can just click and then I'm into that. My brain have to sort of adjust to the idea that I can't just quickly change from there. You have to dive in in a different way and use it more structured. And for some people that's great, and for some people that's less great. Um, to me it's 
maybe less great, but when you come to video, that's a completely different matter. Then you have to work really structured. And that's, to me, with my head, is where the X-H2 shines. Because for video, it's awesome because it's, it, it, I mean, I had, during the filming of this video, I had zero problems. There was literally nothing that was a problem. Everything worked as it should. Never had any fallouts, never had any heating issues, nothing. I only had the base uh, model without the battery grip. I mean, I switched one battery and we filmed, I mean, almost a day. And I had equipped a, s a small uh, monitor on top of it and no cage. It was just handheld or on a monopod because that's what I had. And I really wanted to use uh, the X-H2S for this video because I knew it could do something special and and Fujifilm have really upped the game. I mean, now you can record ProRes, you can record 720 uh, uh, megabits, and with a really nice dynamic range. I shot the whole video using Hybrid Lock Gamma because I also recorded Camera Punk using that. And I found that that setting gives me a great deal of dynamic range. The new F-Log 2 is also good and it's easier to grade than the old F-Log. But still I feel more comfortable using the hybrid log gamma. So it's just, I just like that. So, I mean, I don't think there's any reason to switch it up unless you have to do things in a very specific way. And this is also the first time ever me using a Fujifilm camera where I didn't use the highest setting. And that's actually freeing because you have to make a choice based on what you're doing instead of uh, what you can get. And if you see the video, I mean, I have no complaints. The one thing you always want as a photographer is more dynamic range. So you can bring down the really burned out highlights and make them visible and then still have the fairly dark footage from inside. We didn't have much light inside. But still, I made the video a bit darker than it actually was in real life. That was more or less my thoughts about the X-H2S. It's, I mean, it's incredibly compact and it's insanely fast for still photography. As a video camera, it's, I mean, the great thing about it, you, you can really, you can walk around with it and, and film cinema quality stuff without like security trying to stop you from filming or whatnot. You just look like a dude who takes pictures. And I, that's a great advantage if you do documentary. For this project, I would have liked to have a cage, but that didn't play out. And still, I think it came out as good as I had hoped for. The video itself, while I was taking pictures of the band and sort of getting friendly with these people. One advice is when you deal with musicians, I'm a musician myself, so I sort of know the lingo and the jargon, if you can call it that. So it's kind of easy for me to communicate with musicians, but that's one rule that I think is the most important for photography and everything else is be nice and be polite and give people their privacy when they need it. That's super important. Those three things will bring you so far and and you'll get access to things you wouldn't get access to if you stay that way and and don't demand stuff just be alert when you can get a great picture i had been talking a little bit to melissa you know about music and and, and footage and and she liked the first pictures i took and and then i sort of digged into figuring out what sort of style she liked and it was funny enough the same style that i like so that was easy she likes videos to be gritty. I like videos to be gritty. So that was pretty easy. But the fun fact is that I was not supposed to shoot this video. The one who was supposed to shoot it uh, had to do something else, I guess, or had to cancel. So at the last moment, I was asked if I could do it. You know, I just wanted to do that video because I've, I like the band. I think they're very talented. They have this style of being not chaotic, but more jazzy in their, in their approach to playing concerts. So they have this framework of a set and then they freely play within it. That gives a really dynamic live experience. I, I really like that. So I had picked a brain and I knew what she wanted. I knew what I wanted. 
So I mixed the two in my head and knew how I wanted this video to look. So I went to the location, which is like just a very tiny room actually, it's not big. I don't know what they used it for, but maybe some parties or something. But it was plenty fine to shoot a video. And so I divided the room into a diagonal. So we had one uh, part of the room that was triangular more or less. And I just insisted all the time that I needed this space and be able to shoot that direction from any angle. So I didn't have to shoot like empty boxes and stuff. A few times I did it anyway, but sort of got rid of the background by blurring it out. But mostly I shot from that diagonal. I set up the lights. I had a very nice guy help me out with that, that uh, the band had provided, a guy called Balthazar. And um, I was just saying, can you place the light there and place this light there and I need one main light on, on Melissa. We didn't have much lighting, so we had to make use of what we had and also not to flood the whole thing with flat light. Sometimes I think it's better with fewer lights than it is with too many. So you get more interesting shapes because too many lights makes everything flat in my mind. So just fewer directional lights. Melissa herself took upon herself, although that she's pregnant with twins and man being a singer and having all that space taken up by two babies is quite a thing and that's also what this video is about that's why she reveals this the twins with two roses she had the whole uh, scenography i don't know what you call it which set up you know flowers on the floor and candle lights here and there and a few decorations uh, with flowers i just placed the light so that whole thing made sense we then had another issue, which was that Alang, the guitar player, didn't have time. He had only like half an hour. So I had to make a plan for how to shoot a video with one camera where the guitar player was missing half the time. What I did was I said, I need five playthroughs of this song, complete playthroughs. And then one of my focuses is on Melissa and then the, the backing vocals, uh, backing vocal singers, what do you call it, backup singers? And then, of course, in the beginning, I had a lot of focus on Alain, the guitar player, because he had to leave, so I had to be sure that I had plenty with him. And then I had a run with the drummer, bass player, and then a run with the keyboard player and the percussionist. And then the rest of the time were focused on the, the stomach shoots and the hands and, and the backup singers so I could put something together. It was recorded live, so at some point Melissa, in the end of the song, have some like free phrasing uh, improvisation, and that can sometimes be an issue because you only have one shot with those phrasings, but it might be of another musician. So I had to figure out how to sort of fill out the gaps where the mouth movement didn't fit. And that can be quite a thing when you edit. But the plan worked out. We actually recorded it quite fast. I don't know how many t t hours we spent filming. I think it was about, I don't know, four, maybe. It was four or five, including uh, breaks. So it was actually pretty okay. I mean, it could even be less. I sort of lose the sense of time when I do stuff like this. I feel it when my back starts to hurt. That's when I find out that, okay, we have been going on for quite a long time. What is important when you have so many people there is that you really have to keep focus and you have to be really keen on what you want, especially if one of the guys have to leave. So I was, I was a bit more strict than I used to because I needed a lot of angles. And you have to be insisting, but in a friendly way, LC was actually pretty easy. I just said to everybody, okay, now my focus is on Melissa. Now my focus is on the backup singers. Now my focus is on the drummer and the bass player. Just give me space if I'm walking around. Just be very, very open of what I'm doing so they know when to give space. And then again say, but still you have to perform it as if you were always in frame because it always gives the best result because then you have a lot of footage that you can actually use. 
it, it wouldn't look good if some were like just standing to the side and, and doing this. That, that wouldn't make sense. And then <clears throat> comes the fun part. The Fujifilm X-H2S shoots on CFast cards. And for some reason, my computer thinks that a CFast card is sort of a built-in thing. So if I import pictures onto the computer, it thinks the pictures are on the computer. I don't know if it's because it's so fast, but usually when I do it from an SD card, they just like import it to the uh, drive on the computer. But when I use a CFast card, it doesn't. It just thinks, oh, fine. So you have to really, you have to copy what's on the card and put it on your computer and then make whatever program you use, archive it in a place where it should be archived. Same goes with video, but with video, you're much more hands-on with the footage. You don't trust an app or program to put things where they should, you do it manually. So I copied the whole thing over. Because it's ProRes, Apple ProRes, you know, it just, easy it just place you don't have to do any transcoding of any kind the laptop i use is uh, an m1 laptop and it's just a completely different game you, suddenly you can on battery sit in a sofa and edit a video i do prefer to have a large display when i do coloring and editing but you can still do the editing on the laptop itself and the cool thing is that all the small things you just open the laptop and, and edit that where the biggest editing process i i prefer my my large uh, display and in the editing phase i can remember what i filmed i don't know if other people can remember everything in film but i i can remember it so when i'm sitting there and, and listening to the song i'm like hmm. i have to figure out a way to how do you get into this video how do you sort of start it up and because it was a live video i i wanted a little thing that sort of indicated that this was you didn't just jump into the song you just had a few clips that sort of presented what, what's going on here. And then I used the count in on, on one of the symbols from the drummer to sort of start the whole thing up while switching forth and back uh, between musicians getting ready and getting into the feel. And that's basically how I, I do it. Then I, I put the, the song itself on the main uh, timeline so because it has to sync to the music. So that have to be the main timeline. And then I put all the other clips <clears throat> on top of that. And the cool thing about, I use Final Cut Pro X for this. Uh, sometimes I use DaVinci, but uh, for this I used uh, Final Cut because it's easy and they have made the clips stick. So you don't get the black gaps. You don't have to be so thorough placing your clips because they sort of magnetized uh, they're magnetized in some way um, and so that makes it easier to place the clips right when i have a few clips i want to set the colors right i do that pretty early in the process because i want the right feel when i edit i want the feel from the right colors so i want to see color graded footage when i edit which is a bit opposite of what you used to do because that's used to be a heavy process but today on the M1 laptop, it doesn't matter. So I put a layer on top with all the effects and I use uh, motion VFX plugins for a lot. And on, I think on this one, I stacked two lots to get the right sort of color. Then I uh, used color wheels to get the overall exposure into place. And then I used on each clip, uh, themselves I used the color board to bring down the exposure so it fit between clips and I used the M film look plugin for motion VFX for grain because the footage although it's uh, hyperlock gamma and it's shot at a uh, quite a high ISO so high that I actually used an ND filter indoors I used this uh, M film look uh, plugin because it have the in my experience and what I've seen from different plugins, the nicest film grain I've seen yet. And you can really adjust the size and the granularity and a lot of different parameters that makes it really look nice, like real grain. I use it mostly just for the grain. But in this case, I used it also for a little bit of adjustments, very little. And then on top of that, I used uh, their MLOT 
also the same company. And that's the two plugins I used for editing uh, this video, doing the color grading. And then when I had, I put on this effects layer, so it's just a layer that sits on top of all the clips, so I don't have to do all those adjustments to the whole thing. I just use two plugins in that one itself. And that sort of sets the tone for all the clips on the timeline below it. Then I went on editing and that was really with feel playing it and some, I, yeah, I could u use a drama here. I knew what I had filmed with a drama. So I just picked the ones I, I wanted. Then I knew I had some clips of the bass player where it made sense. And also to cover up the places where the mouth movement didn't work properly because it was another take. But I actually didn't have many issues with that because I also placed the main vocal film clip through the whole song. So I had sort of a bass clip that was timed with the song. So I could always listen and see the movements and see, oh, I know I have a clip here that where she is, where she's singing from another angle, but she sings pretty much the same thing. So I can just pull that in and so, so I could get a different angle. Even though that it's quite a slow song, because it was live, I wanted this feel of live music where you have a lot of cuts, actually. You don't dwell on one clip for a long time. You just you just switch it up all the time. Also because it's a group of people, it's not just like one person. But of course with the main focus on Melissa, because this song is about her twins. That was my thoughts on how to edit the video. I have seen um, a video many, many years ago with uh, Michael Jackson's sister. I, why can't I remember her name? I have to figure that one out. I can remember all my, my clips, but I can't remember names. Janet Jackson. Yep. I can't remember what song, but it's, I think it was in the 90s maybe. Or maybe the early 2000s she had a video made with where it was all recorded in a club sort of a club it looked like concrete didn't look too cozy but it was as far as i remember it was super green tinted because this band also uh, have mostly dark-skinned uh, performers in it i thought that worked really well with that skin tone but I didn't want to watch the video because I didn't want to make a copy of it. I just wanted to do the grading, sort of how I perceived that video because it had made such a great impact uh, when I saw it the first time. I really dig the colors of, the, of that, uh, that video. Maybe I should go watch it if I can find it. But just that memory sort of gave the inspiration and because of what Melissa said, it was like, yeah, I think I'm home free if I sort of go in that direction. She didn't have a lot of uh, suggestions to change the edit. It was just like, um, could you do this and that? Maybe a little more focus on this and a little less focus on that. And it was literally just like five clips. I had to swap around and that was it. And for the budget, I think it, it shoots way above what that video cost to make. I think it's kind of cool that you today can make something that looks like something that's shot on a much, much more expensive equipment and do it on a, on a camera that, that, that has this size. I think that is, I think that's pretty cool um, that you can do that today. It really democratizes the ability to make professional looking footage. This camera can, the X-H2S can shoot up to 6k on the whole sensor. I have another video in the making where I used a Sirui um, anamorph lens at 24 millimeter and that video ended up being like five and a half thousand pixels wide. It can easily go in a, in a cinema, uh, any cinema and, and, and look professional. It's uh, quite amazing. I mean when you look back on films like Blade Runner 2049 I think it's called that was shot on a camera that had a resolution of 2.7k and that was scaled up and it looks fantastic now the X-H2 can shoot 8k video which is absolutely insane that's wild uh, so if you want resolution that's great 
but to me the most important is dynamic range and also the ability to make nice colors and i think fruity film they got the color thing down because it's not hard to make footage from a fruity film camera look great it's really easy and sometimes straight out of camera i think man that this looks really nice i you can i often just makes it it look worse buying putting grain in it and stuff grain can do another thing that making stuff look gritty it can also serve as some sort of a dithering effect so if you have any banding or something like that which can occur when you compress the stuff to be played back on social media then the the grain can actually reduce the banding and all the artifacts from MPEG compression. So it serves a purpose other than just looking gritty. But in this video, it's also for looking gritty. But all in all, it was a good experience. Uh, it's a, it was a very quick video to make. What took the longest was for me waiting for the final audio track. But the editing process didn't take too long because I knew what I had, I knew what I recorded, so that really makes the process faster. And it's easy when you have a video that is about five minutes. When it comes to a video that's an hour and a half, then it takes a long time. It's like exp exponential, the time you have to use on editing, the longer the video is. Because then you have to think completely different. You know, the short, fast clips in a very long video, you can use it sometimes, but you can always use it. And you have to have your story and your plot and everything else in line. You have to follow a script. There's so many things that are different. But in a music video that's like two, three, four minutes long, that's not the hardest thing to make time-wise. It's not easy to make an interesting video. There's a lot of incredible talent out there. It's pretty obvious that I'm not young anymore. And I don't use many of the tricks that younger filmmakers use. I try to sort of keep it a bit more old school because I've always enjoyed the old school way of filming. And I also think that sometimes camera movements itself can become a gimmick that takes over the film instead of being what you actually want to present. I saw an example of a guy who made an incredibly great looking short uh, commercial about a pizza maker or making a pizza and it had all these like fly around things and you know the camera spinning and all that stuff and it looks look really impressive but I didn't want to eat a pizza afterwards I was just impressed by the camera movement and it looked great but it, I didn't want to eat a pizza and I think that's the most important actually if you make a commercial about a product if you don't sit with the emotion afterwards that you really want to get that product or take a bite of a pizza, then I don't think it has served its purpose. And then it was just impressive gimmickry, but not as much a commercial for the product, but more a commercial for the filmmaker. And to me, I'm not important. It is the product, in this case, a song performed by a band that's important. And to get the emotion and feel in the video that the band themselves have while performing it is my aim and my goal. I guess that's it for me explaining how I did the video. I'll do another video about the, the Fruity Film XH-S and maybe if I can get my hands on an XH I will compare the two. I don't know if I can do that but if I can I will do that. I tried the XH2 without the S once and for as a still camera, you still have the passing thing, but as a still camera, man, it's 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 really close to the GFXs, which surprised me quite a bit. When you zoom in at a hundred percent, it's just like super clear. I'm I'm baffled that that was possible to do with the APS-C sensor. So the XH2 is really wow. I was really impressed with that one and the new 56 millimeter. So if I can get my hands on that, I'll compare the two. You know, maybe then you can figure out maybe as you go for this one or that one. But for this video, it was more or less my approach to video filming um, more than the camera itself. And I hope you got something out of it and maybe some inspiration to do your own take or your, your how you plan shooting video. 
So that was it. And the last thing, I'm actually in the middle of recording a basic photo course. I've met a lot of professionals who aren't very technical and doesn't always know the basics, but they're incredible photographers. So I made this course for everyone. You in a fun way and a relaxing way, also with uh, suggestions on when to stop watching and then just go out and shoot with aperture priority and see what happens. Just to make it fun, because I I don't know why learning stuff have been so dull and you have to sit on a chair and look down and pff, kids have always and all animals in the all mammals in the in the world learn by playing so why not us so i made it really playful and i'm really working hard on finishing it it's a big job to make such a course because you have to be right on every point so it's not as much the how much it is it's more how straight to the point it is so it becomes easy to obtain information that makes it possible for any photographer to go into any situation and know what tools they have and make it work for what they want. That's my goal with uh, that course. But it will show up and I'll make some noise on social media about it. And uh, to my faithful patrons, it will be free. So, yeah. And uh, that was it for this time. Go click a bit. Um, yeah, the course is not just for foodie film cameras, it's for any camera. So, I will see you later.